All right, guys, Pneumatics Lab number nine. This one I made a mouthful. I've tried to simplify this, um, but I just wanted to get the two things in, the fact that you could do this for flow amplification, or you could use this for a selection exercise. Uh, but by putting both of these guys in, it kind of complicates the lab. All we're doing is we're gonna have a, a three, two controlling a five, two. Okay, so in the initiating valve one is a small three, two push button. And we're going to say that's operating at around 20 psi. The indirectly operating valve, so the 5-2 that it's controlling, is a much greater pressure of 100 psi. All right, so it's similar to like a relay where you have a push button controlling a relay. Uh, the push button could be at 24 volts. The relay could be at 120 volts on its outputs. So you have 20 psi controlling 100 psi. The other way you could do this is it's indirect control, so you could have a selector switch uh, going back and forth between two circuits. So maybe you're going between hand and auto mode, so then you could have a selector switch going to a 5-2, and that 5-2 would toggle between the hand and the auto load. Okay, for this portion of the lab, we're going to use the 3-2 selector switch to activate a 5-2 control relay. Uh, one position of the selector switch uh, should extend the double acting cylinder, and the light green pneumatic indicator should come out. The other position of the selector switch should return the double acting cylinder to the retracted position, and the red indicator is going to uh, illuminate when you're in the retracted position. Okay, let's see if we can build this up on the fluid sim. Uh, let me just show you this one slide. Normally, with if you're looking up flow of amplification on Google, they're gonna give you something similar to this. So here we have a 3-2 controlling another 3-2. Uh, we do not have any 3-2 uh, directional control valves. In our lab, we all have 5-2s that we're controlling. So our diagram is going to be basically the same. We're going to have a 3-2 controlling one of these control valves, but rather than a 3-2, we're going to replace this with a 5-2. Let's look at the fluid sim and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. All right, so flow amplification. We're going to take a lower pressure and we're going to control something that is operating at a higher pressure. Okay, so the way that we're going to do that in the lab, we're going to, we're going to take a 3-2 operating at 20 psi. Okay, so let's scroll down here. We'll just put in some text as well. How's this guy work? I gotta drop it in. There we go. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, so we've got uh, something working at 20 PSI here, and that 3-2 is going to control a 5-2. So we've got to grab, I think this is the first time that we've introduced the 5-2. So we're going to have this 5-2 pneumatically operated valve. You can just make out that there's a spring on the back end here. So this 3-2 is then going to control this 5-2. We'll walk through all these ports in a few seconds. Uh, we also need another source, so a source at a higher pressure. So we'll drop this bad boy in there. Bring it up. Let's copy and paste this guy. And we'll say that this guy's this 5.2 is a much larger 5.2 operating at a much larger pressure. All right, so 3-2 is controlling a 5-2. 20 PSI is now controlling a 100 PSI relay. Okay, then we need a double acting cylinder, so we'll drop this bad boy in there. There we go. Uh, no speed control or anything there. So let's see, is that right? I, want, I need this guy to have uh, the air come up and push this back in the retracted position. That looks good, and a path for that air to exhaust out. The only thing this is missing here uh, in this uh, fluid sim is there's nothing with those pneumatic uh, indicators. So when we extend, we're going to have a green light turn on. So you can T in here with a green pneumatic indicator. And then over here for the retract, we can tie in a red pneumatic indicator so we can get a green and red to show um, our retract and extend. Excellent, okay, I think this looks good. Let's press play and see how this works. Okay, so the blue is our pressure. We have a 20 PSI pressure here. 
And when we press this button, that's going to come over here and it's going to toggle this 5-2 and move it into the other position. At rest, remember that the spring is denoting that this box right here is our rest state. Over here, this is a 3-2, meaning that it has two positions, one, two positions to the valve, and there are three ports, one, two, and three. Okay, so 3-2. 5-2 is going to have five ports, and again, two positions to that switch. So we have one position of the switch, second position of the switch, and then we have five ports. Again, similar to the 3-2, number one is the supply, number two is an output, and number three is the exhaust. Okay, same as here, supply, output, and exhaust, one, two, and three. The additional ports are port four, and port five. So in this rest state, you can see that air is traveling from number one up to port number two. It's pushing back on this double acting cylinder. Any air that was in here has a path to go from four to five and exhaust out to atmosphere. Okay, when I press this push button here, then that toggles. You can see that the air is coming up and going to the initiating port here. That toggles us up over to the other position of the 5-2. At that point, the double acting cylinder has extended because the air is traveling from number one over to number four, pushing that double acting cylinder out and it causing, causing it to extend. And any air that was trapped in here, we need to provide a path to come out. So that air comes down here and exhausts from two out to three. Okay, so awesome little circuit here where we've got a smaller pressure controlling a larger pressure okay with this one it doesn't uh, hold because the spring is going to uh, make the 5-2 go back to its rest state as soon as i let go of that push button so once i press this push button it will extend if i let it go it will retract okay so this is indirect control meaning that um, this push button here isn't directly controlling the double acting cylinder this is controlling the 5-2. The 5-2 is ultimately controlling the double acting cylinder. All right, so you can write this guy down for uh, lab number nine. And again, this is a flow amplification, but we could change this for a selector switch, right? This selector switch could be controlling a 5-2, and the 5-2 could be toggling between two different outputs, between a hand operation or an auto operation. So again, this is being shown as a flow amplification, but it could also be toggling between two different circuits. All right, guys, uh, let's see how this works in the lab. All right, guys, lab number nine. This next one is uh, flow amplification. Now we only have one pressure coming in here, so we've got to use a little bit of creativity here, uh, but we have the one pressure, we're trying to simulate a lower pressure controlling a higher pressure. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make use of uh, the 5-2 over here. So, so far we've been using the 3-2 valves. Now we're going to make use of the 5-2. The 5-2 has again, one, two, three, four, five ports, and there are two positions to that switch. Okay, whenever you bring a signal in here, then the air is going to go from one up to four. And when you let go of that, then the spring is going to bring it back to its rest state, and the rest state would have air going from one up to two. So this corresponds to the output here and this corresponds to the output here. So flow amplification in that uh, we're going to have this guy here which we're going to think of or pretend is a lower pressure. So say we have 20 psi um, and we've got that controlling 100 psi. So 100 psi would be a much larger 5-2 uh, valve. Okay so we need to provide our air to terminal number one and then from there we're going to go to our double acting cylinder so in the rest position i'd like to have this guy in the retracted position so i'm going from rest over to the retracted position and then when i have my initiating signal come in here then that is going to extend that cylinder so it's similar to having like kind of low voltage control where you have 24 volts controlling 120 volts. Lower pressure controlling a higher pressure. Okay. Crank this guy in. Now we're going to send the signal from the 3-2 into the 5-2. 
Excellent. Then it extends. When I let this guy go, then it retracts. Okay? The spring is going to cause it to retract. Okay? The beauty of this is that I can just tap this. Uh, so there's an issue, right? It's not going the full uh, stroke. So in this case, the issue with this circuit is that it doesn't maintain that position, right? If I tap it, it doesn't do a full cycle. I have to press this for it to go completely out. So for it to go out and stay out, I'm gonna have to make use of one of these guys. Another 5.2, but with, uh, without that spring on the end to make it retract. As soon as I let go of this push button, the signal stops going into here, and the spring causes it to retract. But this is essentially what we're looking for. Looking for flow amplification with a smaller pressure controlling a larger pressure. Okay. The other way you could think of this is uh, we could be cycling between two different circuits. So we could have a hand and an auto circuit, right? So we could be making use of a selector switch and cycling back between two different outputs. All right, guys. That's it for lab number nine. Thank <laughs> you.